everybody, I'm E.A. Howard, and this is The Lineup, your top five for small home and solopreneur business. And thank you for joining us for another top five list. Glad to have you with us. If this is your first time here, welcome. Glad to have you aboard. If you're a returning face, so happy that you're back. I'm really excited. I love to see new people back here uh, and enjoying with us. However you found us, however you got here, thank you for taking some time out of your day. Spend it with me. Spend a few minutes with me. So now, the reason that you're here for another top five list. All right, we all have those people in our lives, both in business and home, personal life, whatever, and they are some freaking work, right? Like you, you know who I'm talking about. You see the phone ring and you're just like, um, I'm gonna send that to voicemail. They are just, they, work. Work is an understatement, right? They are a major problem. They are a problem child. They are your classic Carols and Chad. And it's the same thing with consumers. There are traits and behaviors that every Carol Chad problem child consumer engages in. And you're already imagining somebody in your head that you can think of as like, yeah, I, I kind of get where you're going with this. I understand what you're talking about, right? They're 10 pounds of trouble in a two pound sack. There are five ways that you can recognize that you're working with a problem child. And let's get into it, all right? Number one. They work you like a farm animal. And look, I grew up on a farm, I or a farm country. We didn't necessarily have a farm, we had a small farm. But that, that's not important. That's me rambling again. Um, farm animals do get treated unfairly, but not as unfairly as us sometimes. And that, that's a subject for another day though, uh, animal abuse. But the problem child, you know exactly who they are. They are the person you have never seen, you have never met. They are typically a new consumer, a new shopper, a new client and they are expecting the moon and the stars. They want Tesla, but they are willing to only pay used Honda prices for it, right? They expect to be treated like gold, but they will give you nothing in return, all right? Absolutely nothing. They think that they are the only one whose time is valuable. They think the only one, they, it, it, it's, it feels like it's their world and we're visiting it, right? <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. Number two on our list is they ask for more than they deserve. To me, I'm, I'm one of those people, I believe that everybody should get discounts, incentives. I believe that there should be things like that to help your current clients, your loyal consumers, the people who have been with you as a thank you, as a way to get them to purchase more, as a way to share it with their friends. I do not believe that if somebody picks up the phone and you tell them a price and their first question is, what's my discount? What's my price? They need to go take a hike. They don't care about you as a business. They are not respecting you as a business. They do not appreciate what you do or understand what you do. It is all about them saving money. And if that is the only thing, the first thing that they are concerned about, it is a downhill ride from there. It is at the top of the roller coaster and it's gonna come crashing down. Number three, they quibble and grouse and groan about everything. They are the number one bitching and moaning people in the world. They act like you should be, uh, yeah, like there's, you should be doing it for free. You should just give it to them. You should want to, because who they are, you should just be giving it to them for free. They put crazy demands on you. You feel like you are, you're working 15 hours a day and you're getting paid for one hour, right? It just, that's horrible. They ask you, they question everything you do. Well, you're an industry expert. You're a person who understands your business. You went to school for it probably. You have worked in your business for years. You understand your industry backwards and forwards. Why would they question you? Why would they, and not in a good way. I'm not saying people can't question you. It is a deliberate sort of breaking you down, toxic, abusive kind of quibbling and crossing. Which leads me to the next thing, number four on our list. They make you feel less than them. Every time I talk to a small home or solopreneur businesses, then one of the things that they always tell me is, or when I say these things to them, I say there is a difference between working for someone as a trusted and valued vendor and working or working for, with someone as a valued and trusted vendor or working for someone. And nine times out of 10, problem child, problem children think you're working for them. They treat you like an employee. They question you everything that you do. Where were you? Why weren't you answering the phone? Why wasn't this done? 
rather than, and again, it goes with the one before, number three, they ask, they question everything. And I'm not saying they can't. I'm not saying that they shouldn't. I'm just saying, sometimes you just need to shut up and trust the industry expert. If I tell you this is virtually, this is impossible by modern technology standards, do not tell me it is and make me go off and find the solution again. That is not, that's not how you treat a vendor, all right? And one thing consumers need to remember, particularly is you are hiring a vendor. You are not hiring an employee. You're not handling hiring a staff person. You are hiring a business, a vendor to do work for you, contracted work, all right? The next thing is, number five on our list, they exhaust you mentally and physically. And you know these people. You hang up the phone and you go sit in a corner in a dark room for like 20 minutes so you can just kind of deal and decompress. You see the phone ring and you're like, oh my God. You put in eight hours of work for which really should have taken 15 or 20 minutes because they are so overly demanding. You know these people. You, you've already got a list of them and going on in your head. And you've got, think about it. You, you could probably name 10 people right off the top of your list. All right, so that's been five ways to know that you're working with a problem child, AKA a Carol or a Chad. If you like this content, please hit the like and subscribe button below. I'd love to have you join us for more of these. Uh, we're trying to do them as often as possible. Uh, click on the bell to be notified when there's new shows or when there's new lineups coming out. Uh, if you want to learn more about me, visit ehhoward.com. There you can learn about Find Your Betty, The New American Dream, Sell the Experience, all about me and my background. Uh, you can follow me on social media. I'm literally E.H. Howard everywhere. Well, most places, not everywhere, just most places. If you wanna learn more about the skills that you need to improve your marketing and sales, come on over and visit me at Patreon. We're actually doing a whole thing there where you can learn the actual skills on how to get less problem child, problem children, and convert more Betty's, super fans, Bettys, and casual consumers. And who doesn't want that, right? All right. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully you've gotten some valuable content out of it. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join me. And I will see you in the next video. All right. Bye.